I'm Joe Jackson. You know me as a father of the Jackson Five, being a tightwad and beating my kids like a drunk. But you know, you really shouldn't beat your kids. It's just they do so many damn things make you mad. Like swell up when you whoop them. Then you got to whip all of them so you have a matching set. That's why I'm so glad this new toy came along. The Joe Jackson, Jackson Kids, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yes, now you can beat my kids too. Beat all the Jackson kids. Beat Michael. Hit him so hard you'll knock the white off him. Boy's talking about a skin disease. His skin been bleached more times than Madonna's mustache. <laughs> beat that stank Latoya. Float like a butterfly, stang like a bee. String her up by her funky weed. And sucker punch the hell out of my personal favorite, Tito. Hey, Tito, you want to go a few rounds? You gonna knock my block off again, Dad? <laughs> uh, you got that right, boy. I'm going to hit you so hard, by the time you stop rolling, your Jerry Curl's going to be back in style. Well, compared to you, Woody Allen's father of the year. <laughs> Good shot, son. Too bad you can't knock the talent into somebody. Oh, I tried. Lord knows I tried. Well, I got you this time. That's for scaring Michael, and that's for cheating on Mom. Uh, watch out, son. And most of all, that's for naming me Tito. Look, I won. I won. I finally did something right. Yeah, well, watch out for my left foot. Come here. Come here. I brought you into this world. I'm going to take you out. So don't slug your kids. Slug Joe Jackson's kids. They're used to it. Get the new Joe Jackson, Jackson Kids, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Just beat it. How you living? What? How you living? What? How you living? In living color. Sip on a drink, glide with the guide on a funky scene. Here comes another one of those funky funny more money shows. A cast for laughs, but talent to pros and sisters with twisters. For you, the lucky listener, it seems you don't believe, so you believe what I can picture. So put it to your short and short, we'll make it snappy. Switch jokes and folks, and folks, they need you happy. No need to hold your remote control. Chill, this show's got soul. All aboard, all aboard. The train up a chuckle, you better snuggle up, couple up, or a double up, double, yeah. It's hard to believe, but some of the best things in life are free. So fellas, grab your girl, tell her that you love her, cause that's the way you're living when you're living and living in color. Hello, I'm David Allen Greer. We here at In Living Color are aware that our program can offend certain viewers. That's why we're introducing our new In Living Color voicemail feedback line. If you're a member of an offended viewer group, we want to hear from you. Just call this number 555-1993. Remember, we want to hear from you. Hi, you've reached the In Living Color feedback line. If you're a homosexual offended by a portrayal of the gay community, press 1. If you're an African-American offended by negative portrayals of blacks, press 2. If you're a white supremacist offended by our positive portrayal of blacks, press 3. If you're a feminist offended by our sexist jokes, press 4. If you're a gay Armenian midget, press the star button now. If you're... Okay, now listen up. This is how it's going to be. And this is Mom's Beauty Shop. Our motto is, bring us your head, we'll make it happy, whether you want it straight, curled, or nappy. And my name is LaShawn. I'll be your supervisor. Yeah, well, I don't need no supervision because, you know, I went to USC, you know, mm -hmm. University of Supercuts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I don't actually need, I got a degree, so I don't really need no supervision. Mm -hmm. I can just Well, actually, make I don't really care, you know, because if I was impressed with degrees, I'd be dating a thermometer or something. <laughs> uh, hello? I've been waiting here for 20 minutes. Oh, oh, well, that's cool and everything, and I'm sure that somewhere in London, Big Ben is shedding a tear just for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, what you need to do right now is just read the magazine and relax. This magazine is 20 years old. Oh, well, lucky for you, you probably find a picture of that dress you have on in there. <laughs> uh, what did you say your name was? Slade the Blade to cut them funky braids. Oh, no, I don't think so. You don't touch my hair, okay? That's rule number one and two. All right, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Let's just, just come back here with me and be quiet. Okay, now this is not a space alien. It's a woman sitting up under the dryer. Now what I want you to do, 
is set the control on medium for five minutes, then take her out and curl her hair, okay? Any of that you didn't get. Well, what I didn't get is how come me and you don't get together, understand, yo, yo? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to get what you probably got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just do what I'm saying, okay? And when you finish that, go and put a tent in on uh, Mrs. Smith's hair. What you need a tent for? Her head going camping? <laughs> Uh, welcome to Mom's Beauty Shop. May I help you? I don't know. Uh, my boyfriend says I should dye my hair. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to get curls, but mm -hmm. my boyfriend says I should probably leave it straight. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really know what I should do. Mm -hmm. Well, I know exactly what you should do. You should probably get your boyfriend to comb your hair. Go on somewhere. <laughs> yeah, girl, understand what I'm saying? Take you back to the crib, throw some Sly in the Family Stones, girl, so you can tease me that I comb you with that hot comb, crown royal greaser. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sure that Chuck Willard won't mind me breaking up your little love connection. But what are you doing? What I'm trying to do is meet some nice people and get more acquainted to the people in this staff. That's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure we can plan a little meet and greet function for you later, you know. But right now, while you got so much time on your hands, why don't you pick up a rag and clean up around here or something? <laughs> You are mad to mouthy manicures. I suggest you get back to work before you soaking in it. Okay. Oh, I know you did. I know. Do you wipe up the floor with your grandmother's wig? Don't answer that. This wig costs five hundred dollars. Well, I'm just doing what you told me to do. I'm trying to clean up some stuff. Why come you didn't tell me that B05 was your IQ? Never mind. Look, look, look. look. Then I take you take it from under the dryer. Hey, oh. <laughs> Well, I guess you're going as a bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, won't someone please finish me off? Uh, well, if you excuse me, Mr. Absent-Minded Hairdresser. Wait a minute, who you calling Mr. Absent-Minded? Well, pardon me. I was unaware that you turned down a full scholarship to Harvard so you could go to beauty school and ultimately work your way up into the spotlight here at Mom's Beauty Shop. Come on here. Did you put the henna in her hair? Yeah, I put the henna Barbera in there, and it's gonna look good as soon as it come up out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your confidence is very impressive. Let's just see that it works, okay? Hmm. Oh. 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 oh! You got my hair! Huh? Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> what did you do? Rinse her hair with 3,000 flushes. Well, I said I wanted a movie star. That's all you want. Well, honey, before you go to home, uh, let me put you in touch with the refund department. Go on somewhere. I don't believe it. Uh, Grandma. Oh. What do you want, you old heathens? You got a problem, you fish-eyed fool. Uh, yes, thank you. Look what he did to me. Huh? Quite an improvement. <laughs> Your hair matches those veins in your legs. <laughs> Listen, I demand satisfaction. Hey, look, lady, you don't tell us what we need to do, understand? Because we run this. You better watch it, sucker. <laughs> you fired. Come on, honey, we're going to be late. What do you, you can't leave me like this. The hell we can't. <laughs> we got an appointment with the hairdresser. Uh -huh. <laughs> Captain, the aliens have requested permission to board, sir. Permission granted. 
I am eager to see what these humanoids look like. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Stop! Why is it that every black alien character has to have a head like a butt, a foot, or some other embarrassing part of the body? Thank you, Captain. I hope you don't mind if my crew looks around. Not at all. Bring them in. This is Borkel. <laughs> Welcome, Borkel. This is Crane. <laughs> Welcome, Crane. And this is Quartz. Hey, Quartz. How are you doing? Quartz is very popular on our planet. Gentlemen, we are the only studio in town without a single black filmmaker. This is a key market that we simply have to tap. So today, I have lined up meetings with some of the hottest young black filmmakers in Hollywood. This must be the place! <laughs> now wake up the dotted line, because the Funketeers are here to sign. On the good foot, you know? <laughs> And you look sweet enough to eat, honey. Oh, oh, I get a cavity just looking at you, sweet. Hey, look here, home skillet. Save some for dessert, you know? <laughs> so you must be, um... A funky finger productiones. I'm Clavel. I'm sorry, I don't see your name here. And I'm Howard Tibbs III. No. Let me give you one of my business cards. You know I'm fresh out. Uh, Howard. Bam! <laughs> right here, but you're gonna have to read real quick, all right? Because it's growing back fast. And you're buy one of them blowout kids. Basketball Afro for days. <laughs> well, it is certainly a pleasure to meet you both. Let me start by introducing you to our vice president of publicity, Lee Daggett. Say Lee? What? Bam! You're just the man I wanted to see. <laughs> Interesting title, Oh, Nats. No, 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 you got that backwards. Let me see this here. That's Stank Hull. <laughs> see, it's a love story. It picks up where Pretty Woman left off. Only this time, she does all the shopping at Fat Burgers. <laughs> you know, Did I mention I had a doctor's appointment? Roll we'll block at the door, homie. <laughs> Gentlemen, it has just been a real pleasure meeting you now. Hey, we you. ain't done yet, Big Legs. <laughs> you know, it's a two-picture deal. Show them the trailer. I really don't think we have time for this. <laughs> now, you see, this is a little ditty we like to call Dirty Dancing with Wolves. <laughs> This thing, but the costume got to be back in just about 15. And the and bus. here comes my bus. Stay with the bus now. My Leroy. I got it. Leroy, bring my camera by later, could you? <laughs> now, how does that grab your matzo grip? Ah! Well, you know, I think I've seen just about enough. At 12 o'clock is here, Lisa. Do you two know you left your sandwich cart outside? Well, ain't that a chocolate chip cookie? You know, I knew we forgot something. Hey, look, y'all, who's hungry? Can somebody please show these gentlemen out? Now, did I mention we also produced My Afro's Too High to Box with God? Right, and Teenage Mutant Negro Turtles. Say, 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 brother. Isn't that what I'm saying? Love your work, man. Hi, I'm Rosie Perez. And I'm Martha Rayner. Tonight we have something very special for y'all. We would like to introduce one of the first and original fly girls, Deidre Lang. We are very proud of Deidre. She's come a very long way, and she's very special to us. Very special. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Deidre, Deidre Lang. Lang.
If you're an animal rights activist offended by our treatment of animals, press 91. If you're Latoya Jackson, press 911. If you're Joe Jackson, punch 92. If you're Byron Allen, press 94. If you're Doctor, do you have anything else uh, to add? Uh, the information I provided for you is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's so much more evidence that clearly shows that boxing not only causes great physical damage, but neurological damage as well. So you think boxing should be outlawed? Huh, yes, I do. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. <clears throat> All right, send in the next expert witness, please. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to be back in Caesar's Palace. Uh, I feel that the fight will go at least seven rounds. But you know, he had yeah, he had me running back on my heels. Sir, can you state your name, please? Oh, oh, straight up, straight up. Uh, call the tooth, Williams. <laughs> call the tooth to set you free. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, you fought some of the world's greatest fighters, uh, George right. Foreman, Muhammad Ali, right. and so on. Uh, what would you say they all have in common? Uh, they all kick my ass. <laughs> Basically, that's, that's what it happened. You know, they, they all uh, had kicked my ass. But you know, that ain't the thing, though. Because I want me some... I want me some Tyson. That's what I want, understand? You know, but he's trying to hide from me. But I'm going to find him, you know. Because uh, I want some Tyson. Uh, Mr. Williams, <clears throat> regarding your health... Yes. Uh, do you feel that boxing uh, has in any way uh, affected your sex life? Well, she ain't with me no more, but... I don't think that really has anything to do with, you know, my boxing. You know, I don't know who told you about all that, but, you know, uh, it ain't like I can't still, you know, swing when I get inside the bed, you know. Mr. Williams, wouldn't you agree that boxers who have taken as many blows to their head as, as you have, uh, shall we say, lost something upstairs? Uh, basically. <laughs> Basically, they have, and uh, but you know, it's nothing to do with boxing. See, what it is, it's a ploy and a plan for this Senate and everybody here to try to keep me away from Tyson. And I got to have some Tyson. I mean, according to our file, you've sustained multiple injuries to your your jaw, your head. Yeah, yeah, you look like that fellow on Star Trek. <laughs> Straight up, cuz he looked just like him. But anyway, I take I take exemptions to that because you know, e even in the ring, you know, I keep my tooth polished, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just in case I know I'm selling these five ninety nine out at the crib and stuff, y'all wanna come by and get yourself, you can. Um, Williams? Yeah. Williams. <clears throat> Over your career, how many blows to the head would you say you have taken? <laughs> I took all of them to the head. <laughs> but I mean, that's the best way to take it. Take it to the head, you know what I'm saying? Come on down here, let me show you what I'm talking uh, about. Just let him do it. <laughs> now, now, what you want to do? Just come at me now. Come on with your best shot. Come on, what you want to do? Oh, come on, with your best shot. Come on. <laughs> uh, he caught me with one. It was a rabbit punch. I think, you know, don't stop the fight, though. Don't stop the fight. Don't stop it, man. I can go on. Uh, Y'all want a Coke or Sprite or something? Because it's a two-drink minimum if you're sitting in these tents. Mr. Wilkins. I got to see some ID from y'all. I don't think you're helping your cause by demonstrating this kind of thing. Oh, you trying, to, you trying to dog me. You, you trying to dog me. Mr. Williams. Well, come on, Marsha Brady. Come on. What you want to... Ah! <laughs> well, basically, the reason that I didn't hit is because I respect women. And, uh, you know, the whole... Boxing got my head dizzy, and she called me off guard. Miss Williams, you, you claim that boxing's been very good to you. Yeah, but in a I... sense, in a sense. Uh -huh. well, but, but I hardly think that your report, let alone your record, supports your claim. Oh, yeah, I do have a record out. It's called uh, Call the Tooth in the House, and it's like, mm, got the cake on icing, gonna give me some types to Your testimony's been very helpful and very enlightening. Thank you for your time, and you'll get our decision later. No, there ain't gonna be no decision. No, I got the hair of mine. That's, the, that's how they took my last fight from me. It ain't gonna be no decision. What you talking about decision? You see, you all sitting over there all bourgeois and uh, stuff. No, that's what please. it is. That's a little bourgeois. Hey, man, you better get up off me, man. Get up my, get up my, my hand and this.
inspired depiction of Panderers, press 5376. If you think Delta Burke is exactly the right weight, press 5377. If you're a physically challenged Eskimo, press 5378. If you're a military personnel who enjoys Gomer Pyle in more ways than one, press 5379. Now, the bad boys of comedy present television's hardest working staff and crew. The people who make In Living Color happen each week want to thank you and wish you a happy, safe summer vacation.